ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांत संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू इन द प्रीवियस एपिसोड आई रिमेंबर टू हैव टोल्ड यू दैट वन ऑफ हिस क्लासमेट्स स्वामीज क्लासमेट्स आई मीन बाई नेम हनुमंत रेड्डी वॉन्टेड टू मीट हिम वन डे एंड ही हैड टू वेट फॉर ए लॉन्ग टाइम एंड बाबा डिड नॉट लुक एट हिम इन हिज एंगर he threw at baba whatever came to his hand when the headmaster heard of this incident he had read his food stopped in the hostel as punishment for this outrageous offense this came to the notice of abdul qadir the student leader now swami approached the headmaster and asked him about the incident requesting him to continue the food this shows his compassion his forgiveness the headmaster said that the student had acted with great disrespect i suggested him sir next thursday i'll meet raju and ask him what is the right course of action to take whatever he says we can do in other words headmaster wanted hanuman reddy to seek instructions from swami concerning the course of action to be taken for the utter disrespect the following thursday he went to razu by that time there was a long queue about 100 120 people waiting for that after some time somebody came and said razu calling one by name abdul qadir abdul qadir is the student leader abdul qadir went to razu and he tells this swami told him you have come to talk about hanuman reddy isn't it it was i who forced the boy to act in that manner it is appropriate to punish someone for wrong doing tell that master to resume feeding him again though the disrespect was shown to him he was so compassionate as to allow the headmaster serving food to this boy but well, the next incident the independence of india was a live issue in everybody's mind in those days somebody took the courage to blurt out a strange question when will india get independence baba was immediate and firm he said we will celebrate independence on the 15th of august 1947 Kader told this story to many of the friends and relatives nobody believed it even he did not but what happened was after 4 years it came true and he would not able to believe that raju's words had actually come true that day he realized his greatness one day when raju took three of his friends to the shiva temple nearby the boys witnessed a miracle that surpassed all description as raju entered the inner shrine the place was filled with a glow emitted from his face the glow surrounded the deity while another beam of light returned to raju anjanelu the local salt inspector excise inspector anjanelu was very close to swami of course you must have understood raju Swami Satyam are the names of Swayam Bhagwan. Raju asked him to procure a statue of Shirdi Sai Baba. Anjali replied that it was impossible to obtain in the local market. Raju said, "Go to the Lakshmi Narayan Temple Festival at Pennohobilam, P E N N O H O B I L A M, and try." To his surprise. During the annual festival that took place on the 9th of May that year, he got for eight and a fifty paisa that statue of Shirdi. Anjanelu, being a Shirdi Sai Baba devotee, created a personal shrine for Sai Baba in his garden, spreading a tiger skin on a boulder and placing the statue there for puja for every Thursday. The boulder later became a landmark. with the name sai baba gundu meaning sai baba rock raju attended the bhajans at anjanelu's house as it was quite quiet place 
and did not disturb the neighbors being on the outskirts of the main town. Many devotees walk the distance happily to participate in bhajans every Thursday. Angenil children, the sexual inspector's children, Narsimadas and Suburatnamma were Ranzu's classmates and were very close to him. Many years later, Narsimadas would narrate some wonderful events relating to Ranzu, whom he would then respectfully call Swami. Swami was introduced to family members as classmate. They developed great love towards him. He used to visit his house daily and inquire the well-being of his parents before going to school. Sometimes his father used to invite him to share food and he would very kindly oblige. Swami used to wear a white shirt and a khaki short to school. Once he asked Narsimadas's mother, meaning Anjanelu's wife, to sew buttons on his shirt. The shirt was torn and so Anjanelu had the good fortune of presenting new clothes to Swami. Swami and I used to go to school together, said this Nasima Das. Nasima Das would add, he would call me Das, my father Anjanelu as Ayagaru and my mother Amagaru. We used to call him Satyam. After school, he used to play football with friends. He would be goalkeeper. Thus, a relationship, not of blood, but of love was formed. On every Thursday, he would come to a house from school and after bath, wearing silk dhoti and upper garment, he would perform puja to a shrine of Shindi Sai Baba. He would then sing Manasa Bhajare Guru Charanam Dustara Baba Sagara Taranam. Then he would sing Baba Rava, Sai Baba Rava. Both are composed by him. When he sang, he would ask everyone to follow the chorus. During the bhajans, he would stand in deep concentration, glowing in splendor, and keep swaying his body forward and backward for three to four hours. During this time, he would advise, instruct, bless, and materialize things, vibhuti, pieces of cloth from the kafni of Sri Shirdi Sai Baba, picture, prints, and fruits for the visitors. He would raise his hand, pick up things from nowhere, and give them away. Normally, he gave fruits or candies. He asked the devotees to open their mouths and would feed them eatables himself. They had to eat the prasadam immediately. Other objects that he gave were immediately to be taken home. None else were to know what he had given. They were not supposed to be told off to others. He would tell some people to go to a specific place on a different day for an interview. Afterwards, he would say, I want to go take Harati, break the coconut after Harati. After Harati, he would usually fall down. He would wait in different places in the room to break his fall, for we were not sure where he would fall. I think I made quite clear. At the end of the bhajan, he used to fall, and people did not know where he would fall. That is the point. Yes. So, Father Anjanagaru would pick him up, keep his head on his lap, and wave a fan on him. He would get up after 15 minutes or so, tired with his eyes red. On recovery, Swami would ask my mother, meaning Narsimadas' mother or Anjanayal's wife. Swami wrote a play, Pari Jatapa Haranam, Pari Jatapa Haranam, he staged it at their house. He asked his father Anjanayal to arrange a stage for the performance. And Anjanayal had maintained eight attendants. They arranged the stage in no time. This play was only for the family. He would wear his mother's sari, meaning Anjanayal's wife. Father used to dress him up. My sister Subharatnamma, meaning Anjanayal's daughter, played David Indrudu. 
Satyam took on the role of Satya Bhama and he asked me to play the part of Sri Krishna. To be very clear, Narasimha Das played the role of Sri Krishna and Baba played the role of Satya Bhama and the Subharat Nama played the role of Devendra. Like that, all roles have been fixed. The most enthralling scene in the drama is when Sri Krishna approaches Satya Bhama to appease her anger and she kicks him on his head with her left foot. Sri Krishna says that he was thrilled at the touch of Satya Bhama's foot. So I was thrilled when Satya Bhama's sacred foot touched my head because Satya Bhama was the role played by Swami himself who had to kick Krishna and Narasimha Das was playing the role of Krishna. Even today, I am thrilled to recollect the touch of his foot on my head and I am grateful to him for blessing me in this way. Radhu observed propriety, even selecting the role. I always thank Swami for having given me the role of Sri Krishna and taking up the role of Satya Bhama himself. Instead of doing the converse, which would have saddled me with the sin of touching the person of an avatar with my foot. I may not have bowed down to his feet, considering him as a classmate only, but he touched my head with his foot and I now realize how blessed I am. Razu treated Kameswaramma, his teacher, Tamir Razu's wife, as his mother and affectionately called her Amma. Kameshwarama used to sing bhajans. In the early days, the bhajans were about Lord Rama. One of the important bhajans were Sri Rama, Jai Rama. They were originally held in Seshmarazu's home, but to the large crowd and objections from Seshmarazu's wife, the venue was shifted to the house opposite, belonging to Narayana Shastri. Tamirazu was one of the active participants of bhajans and would walk for a kilometer to Sai Baba Gundu, situated in the garden of Anjaneyu. Razu's sister, Venkamma, would recall that Tamirazu's home had become a home of Sai miracles. Razu would grant them visions of the gods and show them other thrilling spectacles. On Lord Krishna's birthday, Razu asked Tamirazu's wife, Kameshwarama, to keep a pitham, a pedestal, for an idol, a seat for the divine, in the puja room, and said that he would go over to give her darshan there. That day and the next, he blessed them with thrilling experiences. Thank you. We'll continue in the next session.